55 randomized controlled trials, not little fly-by-night six-person studies, but legit RCTs published in Frontiers in Nutrition in a meta-analysis demonstrated that green tea might just be the most powerful thing that we could consume for metabolic health, showing massive reductions in total cholesterol, massive reductions in LDL cholesterol, reductions in fasting glucose, reductions in HbA1c, and also major changes in oxidative markers throughout the body. Long story short, green tea has some crazy effects and I wanna teach you how you can use it, how you can time it, but also some of the other literature that backs it up. Essentially what we've learned about green tea is that it's not just unique because it is a potent antioxidant. It has these things in it called catechins that actually stimulate your body to produce more antioxidants and at the same time also stop pro-oxidant activity, so things that would normally cause some damage within your body. Let's go ahead and break it all down. I also put a link down below for 30% off through Thrive Market. It's an online membership-based grocery store. Right now, there's a lot of focus on how European foods have higher quality ingredients than American foods, and that's a real thing. And it's something that I've liked about Thrive Market for the last practically a decade is that they've had focus on this long before it was popular, right? They were really focusing on high quality ingredients in their food. And that is exactly what they're about, making good quality food accessible. So that link down below gets you 30% off your entire first grocery order through Thrive Market. And then it gets delivered right to your doorstep, no matter where you are in the country. So it's making it so it's accessible to get good quality food that we might only have at like expensive grocery stores in Southern California or something like that. So it's really cool. And I love that they're putting the ingredient quality first. So that link 30% off plus a free gift when you use my special link in the top line of the description down below. Okay, so we know that longer term green tea has some awesome metabolic effects, but there's also short term huge benefits, which by the way, can you drop a comment down below in the comment section? It helps the algorithm. YouTube really likes to see that engagement. So in addition to hitting that subscribe button and that like button, just drop a quick comment, even if it's just for the algo. So there was a study in food and function that took a look at the catechins, the particular flavanols and things that we would see in green tea right after a 56 gram of fat cheat meal. Now, the fat itself is not problematic. Where things come in to be is that if you're having a bunch of carbohydrates and a bunch of fats and you're going overboard on the fats, yes, there's no denying that that's going to induce some metabolic distress. Okay, fat alone, maybe not, but just a high fat general standard American style meal, definitely problematic. So what they did is they gave them this high fat meal and then they had them do a stress test, which was gonna kind of measure their endothelial function. So like basically their blood vessels and things like that. They gave one group a low flavanol drink and they gave another group a high flavanol drink that also had flavanols and catechins that would be in green tea. The results were crazy because they measured at 30 and 60 and 90 minutes. What they found is that the group that had the low flavanol drink, they ended up having these reductions in flow-mediated dilation. Basically, their blood vessels didn't flow blood through as well. So they were having problems, right? As early as 30 minutes. Whereas the group that had the flavanols, like the high flavanol, at 30 minutes, they were always seeing improvement, basically it course corrected. And by 90 minutes, they had improved flow-mediated dilation above baseline. So it actually got better, showing that green tea has these protective effects on the overall vascular system, the endothelial system, like the cells. So making it so blood can flow better, modulating blood glucose, modulating blood pressure, and aiding in just healthy metabolism. So even in the short term, it can help combat against a bad meal, which is awesome. But then if we look specifically at the inflammation piece, we're starting to see some amazing evidence that green tea can be protective and one of the best things you can consume for a healthy metabolism. There's a compound in green tea that's called geranine. G-E-R-A-N-I-I-N, geranine. It's kind of a weird one to say. They gave subjects in this case six weeks of a high fat diet. This was a rodent model study to get a little more mechanistic. So six weeks of a high fat diet to induce obesity and metabolic distress. And they gave them this antioxidant that's rich in green tea, right? This geranine, really wild impact. So basically they did a crappy diet for six weeks. And then after that, they did four weeks of either regular food or regular food plus this compound. So 10 weeks total, one group got this compound, one group didn't after becoming obese. Their oxidative markers, their serum antioxidant levels, and their glutathione redox all improved massively in the geranine group, 
What this tells us is that it was actually making it so that the liver was able to process the negative effects of becoming obese. So this is independent of weight loss, right? So this is both groups got obese and the green tea protected against the obesity problems. And it's not saying that you could just become obese and be perfectly fine if you drink green tea. Point is, is it's combating the inflammatory responses and it's allowing for better glutathione redox and better overall just liver metabolism dealing with the effects of obesity. This is super powerful because imagine what would happen if you were also losing the weight along with this. It might be one of the most powerful metabolic restorers that exists. The other piece, there was a study that was published in Advances in Nutrition that found that when you have a high fat diet or standard American diet like this, it increases the risk of gut permeability. It's fairly widely known that basically your gut becomes more permeable when you're unhealthy. That's not a good thing. We don't want that, right? So what we found is that green tea has a way to protect against this. So this study was published in Phytomedicine and it found that green tea restored the epithelial function of the cells in the gut even after damage. So it restored their ability to be healthy and help the gut actually repair itself. Not only do we see benefit from the gut microbiome with green tea, but now we're seeing a benefit that actually restores the gut lining, which is probably our first line of defense between inflammation, right? So it's like that gut lining, if that's disrupted, then inflammatory cytokines and things get triggered through that gut permeability. So if we repair the gut more, we actually protect ourselves against some of the epicenter of an inflammatory response. Well, next we get into a study that is fascinating about what can happen to your body in just six days of a bad diet just six days. So this study was published in the journal of clinical medicine. It was a human model study for six days where they gave subjects a high fat diet. They basically had them overeat by about 40% of their normal calories in fat. So they really overdid it. But in just six days, they decreased insulin sensitivity in the muscle by 4% and they decreased insulin sensitivity in the liver by a whopping 8%. In six days, they did this level of metabolic damage with a high fat diet. And again, when I say high fat diet, I don't mean like a low carb, high fat diet. I mean just like lots of extra cruddy fat. So then we look at a study published in PLOS 1 that shows us how green tea combats this and it makes you want to run to the nearest store and grab a couple bags and just down them. They found that green tea almost immediately increased the first enzyme in ATP production, which that means it's basically helping the mitochondria produce energy, which is critical for healthy metabolic function. There was an increase in ND3, which is the first enzyme in the first complex of the electron transport chain. What that means in human terms is essentially building the facility to build energy. This is very much so required. Also provided the enzymes required in what's called complex four, which is probably the most important step of the electron transport chain. What all of this gobbledygook means is that there were massive increases in energy production, fuel utilization, like how it was able to use glucose and fat. The better you are at using glucose and fat, the better you are able to turn that into energy and absolutely use it versus store it and have metabolic dysfunction. And then last but not least, it increased PGC1A, which means that it turned the mitochondria into fat burning machines. It made it then have a stronger affinity to oxidize fat. But one of the most fascinating things that we've been seeing now with green tea is published in the International Journal of Obesity. And they found that after just a short amount of time, just one week on a high fat diet, one week, leptin levels increased 70%. Now leptin is what signals to the brain that we have enough fuel on hand. But in people that are metabolically unhealthy, when you have that much of an increase in leptin, it actually can make you leptin resistant. And when most people are leptin resistant, you're increasing circulating leptin, which is actually having downstream effects, making you more hungry, contributing to metabolic issues, contributing to blood pressure issues, glucose issues, a whole host of other things. It's not good to have high chronically circulating levels of leptin. Insert green tea, we go to a study published in medical archives where they looked at rodents and they did this in a little controlled fashion. They did the same thing. They gave a high fat diet and it immediately within days induced a serious increase in leptin. Circulating leptin was starting to cause a whole host of metabolic issues, as we know. They gave them varying dosages of green tea. In a dose dependent fashion, the green tea reduced the leptin levels. The highest dose of green tea actually reduced the leptin levels completely down to baseline how the rodents were before they ever were obese. Let me say that again. The green tea restored the leptin levels back to the level of a control before they ever got obese. They took obese mice 
with serious leptin resistance and problems, gave them high dose green tea, and it protected against the leptin resistance and actually restored their leptin levels. This is amazing when it comes to appetite, when it comes to weight control, when it comes to healthy metabolism. So what does it look like in terms of how we consume this stuff? What do we do? Well, there's evidence that's published in the Osaki journal that was looking, it was an Osaki cohort rather, Japanese study, said that like up to five cups of like little six ounce cups of green tea, there was increasing benefit across the board in all kinds of markers, metabolic markers, also psychiatric markers. So five times six, so we got 30 ounces. That sounds like a lot of green tea, but that's not that much. That's like two large cups of green tea, and that's just to get the best result. That's a lot of caffeine for those that really are worried about it. So one good-sized cup, maybe, maybe even like 10, 12 ounces, like if you go to Starbucks, get a Vinti green tea, I don't know, something like that, is all we really need to get serious metabolic benefits. But you could go all the way up to like five cups or 30 ounces and start to get a big benefit. Now, when should you have this? We have to remember that green tea can increase fat oxidation by a whopping 17%. So the best time to have green tea, if you want to get a fat loss effect, is of course going to be in a fasted state, and ideally even pre-cardio, like fasted state, prior to having any food, and then go to the gym and do a little workout or do some cardio. That's going to be a huge thing. But what we're seeing here is that having green tea alongside a fatty meal can protect you. So you may not eat unhealthy, right? But you may occasionally have these meals that are going to be high in fat and not the best meal. Having green tea with that meal can protect you. And what that would mean is like, if you're gonna have a cheat meal, maybe have a cheat meal with breakfast. So you can have caffeine and green tea with it. But the benefit here is so cool, is that we don't even need to have caffeinated green tea. The caffeine will definitely encourage the fat oxidation, but regular even decaffeinated green tea could be hugely beneficial and still exhibit almost all these benefits from an antioxidant perspective, even sans caffeine. So anytime you're having like a meal that maybe isn't super healthy, have some green tea with it. It's so wild. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.